What's going on guys, Norgates here. In today's video, I've got my top five attacking quick tips to instantly improve and increase your performance and the amount of wins that you get into the weekend league or in rivals. Now let's go over the first one, the most simplest one. It's all to do with actual finesse shots. People are struggling with finesse shots. Why can I not score them? Why are they so difficult? Well, finesse shots are very, very easy. I'll show you one example over here. It's the perfect one to score when you're outside the box in these angles and they still work very, very well. The key thing is with a finesse shot, guys, you have to remember, if you have a finesse shot play style, someone like Morgan, she's very, very good. But the key thing is create that 45 degree angle once you create the 45 degree angle, you then want to hold the R1 button or RB if you're an Xbox and then the shoot button and you want to aim about two thirds, two thirds bar power. Now, the reason why this is not working for a lot of you guys is some of you are not green time. You don't have to green time it. I'll show you an example where I don't. So I'll show you here another example. This time we have it with Swanson. She doesn't have the finesse shot play style plus, but you can see the key thing is we create that 45 degree angle towards goal. You see that? And the most important thing is that 45 degree angle to the direction you want to go. So if you want to shoot like this across, you face this way. If you want to shoot this way, you face like that. Shoot on your dominant foot. And also what's more important, don't forget outside the penalty arc, the most important stat is the long shot stat, not the finishing stat. So the finishing stat is irrelevant outside the box. So make sure you've got someone that's got good long shots. But again, look, you can see here, finish shot, two thirds of power without timing it or miss the timing. And I still get into the back of the net. As I said, make sure if you do and you can put your time shit on, but this is one of the most easiest ways to get those easy goals, especially if someone like Hyung Min Son inside the game. If you want to get better at FC24, I do have an FC in 24 FIFA score series. But before you skip ahead, what if I told you if you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money? I can say that because I've been running this school for many years and thousands of people have already joined and even stay on. We go over complete in-depth gameplay tutorials, showing you the theory of it and then showing you gameplay examples in a structured format. Unlike my YouTube channel, they had a progressive learning system teaching you everything from the core mechanics to the meta so you can get better as a whole with explanations that go beyond the scope of my YouTube channel. FC School has already started with new videos coming out every single week. These videos were adjusted to the recent patches and updates so you can stay up to date and ahead of your competition. So come join thousands of others in a mature community for those looking to get better. Patreon.com forward slash nil guides or click the link down below. Now when you join we already have a library of hundreds of videos more than my YouTube channel in fact but new FC 24 videos getting added constantly so you never run out of content. Remember the biggest mistake people make is they spend thousands of dollars on FIFA points every single year thinking a team will make them better but it won't. But but now it's time for you to make that change. And don't forget, if you don't get better after one month, just send me a message and I'll refund your money. That is the Neil Guides guarantee. Patreon.com forward slash Neil Guides. Link is down below in the description or click on the pinned comment below. The next one I wanted to show you is using creative runs to make your players make these unique runs that your opponent can't predict. Here's a very advanced level one, uh, which will be used a lot on the pro scene. You'll see this very, very soon. But the question is, how do I do it? It's actually more simple than you think. You can see that player first makes that run down, as you can see, and that player makes that run down. Then second of all, the player then turns to the left and you can see it completely leaves the defender, creates a space. So how does this all work? So the key thing is it's called creative run or directed runs. All you got to do is you press the L1 button to the player you want to move. So this player, you press the L1 button and you flick the right analog stick down. And that will say to the game, I want you to move down. And I do it again, L1 button again, and I move it then to the left hand side. So you turn the game, I want you to move down, then left. Let's have a look. I'll show you one more time. I'm going to put it on slow mo. I'm going to pause it, press the L1 button, and I flick the right stick down. Sometimes it might not work, just pause it. So if, for example, it doesn't work, press the L1 button, wait half a second, then flick the right analog stick, the player moves down. You can see that I do the same thing again. Watch. So you can see I press the L1 button. Half a second I pause and I flick the right analog stick as you can see at the bottom to the left hand side and then that play then changes direction. And that's how you can basically make players run these unique spaces however you want like a wizard inside the game. And to finish it off I just do a precision lob pass which is the new feature to direct the ball exactly where I want it to be. Then all I got to do is score a simple goal but of course Bowen gold rated of course is going to miss that volley. But that's another tip is using creative runs to make those unique movements. The next one I wanted to go over is the most overpowered technique inside the game is the control sprint. Simply you just hold the R1 button and you can literally glide past your opponent, even glide past the goalkeeper and score. I'm sure you guys noticed already, but there's one thing people are forgetting is they're doing it incorrectly. When you're using the control sprint, the key thing is, is that when you go towards someone, try to fake and deceive an angle first. 
Now the key with this is using deception. I'm sure you guys know how to use this already, but you're not using it properly. So when you get the ball over here, this is what a lot of the top tier players do is they pretend to go one way, then they hold the R1 button and then they exit in the other way. So you're basically baiting your opponent, thinking that you're going one way, then you're using control sprint to shift away because their normal jockey or their running jockey can't catch up. If you have someone with a play style plus like the Binia, she moves even quicker. And you can see here, I completely pretend to go into the space and I go direct. And even against the goalkeeper, even if the goalkeeper AI can't read it, then I move away. So that is one way of using it. And then the second way of using it is using it in combination with left stick dribbling. On its own, it's not the most important thing, especially against a good player. You want to be using it with normal left stick dribbling here, as you can see, to push the ball away. And then I use the control sprint to burst into speed when I burst into a gap that I need that speed. That's the way that I do it. So I don't use it all the time to abuse it, but I use it if I want to burst into this into the gap. You see that? Because where this prospers the most is that if your opponent is using a normal jockey, you can run and actually choose the angle you want to go in. So that's the thing. If you see this space in front of you, you can use it to get a speed boost into. But when you're in these native situations, it's better to use a left analog stick here to beat the opponent or to beat the play. You only want to use it to give you the advantage. I'm just going to show you one more final example to kind of explain what I mean. So you can see here, I use the R1 button. I use it to sprint into the area. Then when I'm into the area, I keep using it. But when I'm near to the goalkeeper, I don't need to sprint, I still got to take a touch away. I use a simple left stick here. So using a combination of both of them together to give me the goal. So what I'm trying to say is don't overuse it. Use left stick as well to move away, but use the control sprint to drive into space. The next one I wanted to go over is the player lock. Now, I'm sure you, many of you know about it last year, but it's still very, very effective this year. I'm just going to show you a quick and easy, simple example to make it a bit more easier. But it allows you to maneuver a player exactly where you want to go. And to be honest, that should have been a goal. But let's talk about finishing another day. Um, when you're in this situation, for example, here, you can see, make sure you got the player lock feature actually turned on in the settings. But you can see here, I press the L3 and R3 button inwards, like so. You can see above the player's head, there's like a head as like a kite then i flick my right analog stick to move from fella to morgan and that means now ai is now controlling this player and with this player i can do whatever i want i can run to wherever i want to go and if i want a normal ground pass to me i press x if i want a lob pass to me i press square if i want a through ball to me i press triangle so you're effectively telling ai what kind of ball you want so then you can see here, I'm running with Morgan, running, 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 and then I press the triangle button because I want AI to make the pass and I'm able to make this a real ball. And the reason why I did this is because I can force a 2v1. So here I should have probably just sweated it here instead. Of, but I wanted to, so the situation only could have worked because the player locks. So I should have to do it again. So you can see here, I press the L3, R3 button. I flick the right analog stick also to the left hand side, as you can see there. Kite moves to Morgan. With Morgan, I run upwards. I run down to deceive my opponent, to fake my opponent. My opponent gets confused. Then I ask for the through ball, and then that allows me to then create and get myself in that situation. There's more advanced situations where you can use it as well, of course. I'm just going to show you one example here, a more advanced one. You can see I win the ball with Svensson down the wing. I run all the way down the wing, got nowhere to go, so I bring the ball back as you normally would. I use a player lock to then get the ball to the Binia and then basically use it to go and beat my opponent. But you can see that player lock was used in that situation to not only give myself that extra space, but to create a unique run with the Binia, I see I'm already moving downwards. So I'm ready to take a finesse shot, but I see my opponent makes a mistake. So I'm able to pull out and then just go around my opponent. So it's very, very effective for creating space and creating unique movements. And then the final one I wanted to go over is guys, just using the left stick. You're going to see a combination of what you've learned in the other five tips, but just have a look here. L1 triggers, keeping it simple, making plays make that run. But the key thing is using the left analog stick here. Look how I used a bit of the L1 strafe to beat the opponent. Then you can see here a ball roll. Then watch just left stick to go around my goalkeeper to get the goal. Now you're going to see another example, which is basic left stick dribbling. Now you can't see the control on this one, but this is just left stick dribbling. This is no other funky dribbling, guys. Good agility and balance. Left stick dribbling is all you need. It does take some time to master, but honestly, left stick dribbling, because people are struggling when they're defending, they're panicking. And because goalkeepers are so bad when they come out and they get dropped like this, left analog stick is all that you need. Of course, there's a shot here 
earlier, but I thought I'd go for the spectacular. So if you ever know situations and you can't go through like here and your opponent's being too aggressive, remember the left analog stick is going to be your safer. Just keep it very, very simple. As you can see, using some directed runs, but using the left analog stick ultimately just to walk around my opponent. Very, very simple. Should have been a goal. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the top five quick tips. Try to implement these in. Um, they might take some work of testing, but once you do them, I promise you it's going to change your result exponentially. Don't forget, if you want to get better at FIFA, you can come join my FIFA score series, patreon.com forward slash no guys, link down below in the description. Or you can just click on the, on the left hand side of your screen now. Don't forget, if you don't get better after one month, refund your money. Links down below in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.